Hi you folks, Toad here with visordown.com and this is the KTM 390 Adventure. This is about the longest green lane that I know of in Warwickshire and this is about as good as autumn days this September have got so far. So we are going to combine these three forces of nature and we're going to go for a little ramble. Let's see how we get on. adventure bike from the adventure monsters that is KTM we are on a very nice green lane just outside of Coventry it's called Ridgeway Lane and it is absolutely bogging down here I did ride it the other week and it was nowhere near as muddy as this thankfully this KTM has got about 200 mil of ground clearance so should be able to put up with anything that this particularly muddy lane can throw at us. You do get a lot of the four wheelers coming down here, so it is quite tricky. They do put big furrows in the mud and they pull logs out, as you can see. But there is probably, especially with lockdown putting track days out of order, there's probably going to be more and more people turning to a bit of off-roading or a bit of green lane is the way to get there. Two wheels fixed this winter because to the beginning of December at least we are going to be holed up in our houses and staring at our phones once again. Which is never fun. So what is the 390 Adventure? Well as the name would suggest it's part of the 390 family. So you've got the RC 390 Sports Bike, you've got the 390 Duke naked and then you have this. The 390 Adventure. Now this is probably the most different of all three. The RC 390 and the Duke 390 have kind of related quite closely. But there's a lot, a lot of changes that have gone into this bike. This is 5,499 of your English pounds, which means it is doing battle with things like the V-Strom, the little baby V-Strom, the Honda CB500X, way that was super. And the Benelli TRK adventure machine thing with Bobby that you're probably never going to see any of on the road in the UK at least. In my mind, this is probably the one that you want. And if you want to go off-roading, it's definitely the right one that you want. We're going to come on to why in just a moment. So, first impressions. Oh, there's a man on the trials bike there. How do? All good mate, all good. First impressions. These tyres are actually quite good. Continental TKC 70s I think is what they're called, or TCK 70s. They're actually alright. Considering they are basically road rubber. So let's have a closer look at the little 390. So there it is. I mean, it's typically KTM, not exactly what you'd call pretty, but then again, hmm, I don't think there are any adventure bikes that are actually pretty. What it is though, is utilitarian, it looks rugged, could do with a little bit more of a pokey exhaust on that, but you can get the acropovic system, bang it on there, and it's going to sound like a proper little thumper. One of the things that strikes me about this bike when you view it, it looks like the forks are actually quite far raked out and they kind of are and it just gives it a nice benign handling characteristic um, even when you're riding on soft mud and like we are today um, it's it's very benign it's got no nasty surprises for you um, it'd be perfect for a, a beginner in the world of green laning or off-roading i think so anyway 
So it gets a bit more tricky down here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the old rub your belly and pat your head thing where you have to turn off the traction control until that says release button. Oh, and now it's turned the traction control back on again. This is so annoying. Mm. Right, traction control is off. It's a really annoying thing about this system that I'm going to tell you. On most bikes, if you turn off the key, then the traction control will revert back to road mode. It's kind of like a safety feature. On this, if you stall the engine or use the kill switch, it returns the ABS, the uh, traction control to the on-road setting. So that means every time you stop, and you're riding off road, so you will quite a bit, and you will stall it, and you will drop it. Every time you do that, you've got to do that little rig and roll of turning the traction control back off, and it's really frustrating. That was deep. So, as I was saying before I pulled over, this is the one of the 390 engine KTMs that really stands out because it's the most different to anything else in that 390 range. It's got a, a slightly different frame to the other bikes. Um, and most importantly for this model, it's got a completely different suspension. Where the other two have got road suspension, which is still WP kit, so it's still good. I think this is quite deep. Yeah, it was deep. Um, they've still got WP, but this has got proper WP Apex adjustable adventure bike. Proper off-road suspension is what you'd call it. And it is very, very good. It's got 170 mm travel at the front, 177 mm uh, travel at the rear. You've got rebound dampening, compression adjustability at the front. Basically, like nothing else you'd get in this sector. In this just over five grand, but under six grand sector, there's nothing else that's, that's as well specced as this thing. You've got TFT dash, and you've got cornering ABS. So this is a 6K adventure bike. You can ride on an A2 license, but it's got super bike, spec cornering abs i mean i don't know if it's as good as the cornering abs you get on a fire blade or a big super naked or something like that but it's got it i'll tell you the other thing that it's got that's really cool it's got buttons on a dash that can press and do things instead of just being able to reset your trip or go to another trip on this you can actually turn things off and on and that's cool because that's what kids want to do they want to fiddle with buttons and change stuff ruin the settings of the bike. So yeah, very high level of equipment. It's got the KTM uh, sort of signature TFT dash going on there. So while we're talking about the brakes and the cornering ABS, I just want to mention the actual hardware that's fitted to the bike because KTM have been using Vibre, which are a subsidiary of Brembo for quite some time now. Um, and they're pretty good stoppers to be fair, they're uh, they're all right. I mean, we've got a 320mm single disc up front and a 270 disc at the rear. And there is just enough bike feel, yeah, power. I mean, you'd always want more, wouldn't you, really? But with the weight of the bike and the application that it's designed for, I actually think the brakes are pretty much adequate. So, comfort wise, I know today I'm not really testing that, but I have done some motorway trips on it, and I'm surprised to say that it's actually very good. There's not a discernible amount of vibration through the bars, pegs, seat. It's all pretty smooth, to be honest with you. The only thing is that the seat is very high. It's over 840 mil. I'll double check that number in a little bit. But yeah, over 840 mil definitely, and it is quite firm. Um, meaning that long days in the saddle will result in a little bit of a numb bum for some of you. Um, the height of the seat as well could put some people off. It would be nice if, I'm not sure, I think KTM do an option low seat. Uh, it would be nice to have sort of like a two position adjustable jobby because it's not too much trouble to do. Let's go around this because that's seriously deep in the middle and slippy. And 
that was very deep. So yeah, an adjustable seat would be nice because tall bikes like this, kind of one of the things that puts people off them is having a tall seat. But actually once you're up here, it's really good. And the pegs and the bars are nicely set. You can adjust the position of the bars, obviously, but you know what, there's no, no real problem when you're transitioning from sitting down to standing up. It's not, it's not sure. So yeah, all in all, this is a cracking little adventure bike for the money. Yeah.